Staying with Italy, this is one of our morning must-reads. You can agree with it, you can completely disagree with it, but it's worth a read. And this comes from Yanis Varoufakis, a very divisive figure, former finance minister of Greece, writing in The Guardian. The president, he's talking about Sergio Mattarella, is forced to call fresh elections that, courtesy of his moral drift and tactical blunder, will return an even stronger majority for Italy's xenophobic political forces, possibly in alliance with the enfeebled Forza Italia of Silvio Berlusconi, now co-founder of the Democracy in Europe movement and a leader in negotiations with the country's creditors during the Greek debt crisis, Yanis Varoufakis joins us on the phone now. Yanis Varoufakis, when you look at the Italian crisis, does it bring back ugly memories of what happened with Greece? Or uh, it's been such a long time since we had the Greek crisis, we have better institutions, and actually the, the story has moved on. The story has not moved on. The reality on the ground uh, throughout the Eurozone is one of fragmentation and disintegration. What had happened is that the visible signs of the crisis have fallen out of uh, the radar screen of uh, venerable institutions like Bloomberg. But the, uh, the crisis has not eased at all. Indeed, it is progressing at an alarming rate. All right, but we also have Ovango Piccoli here, which I want to get to, Yanis, to bring into the conversation. Do you believe this is anxiousness in Europe about immigration or is it about the relationship with Brussels? In the case of Italy, is is the issue of migration and the wider economic issue that you can call it unemployment, inequality, and so on. These were the two key drivers in the last election on the 4th of March. Most likely, they will be the key drivers in the, in the next one, regardless of when we're going to have, with a stronger anti-establishment feeling, given what has been happening since the 4th of March. This is what people care about. They care about jobs, and there is, obviously, in Italy, there is the issue of migration. And again, we should not look at it and spread it to other countries. Migration is not in Italy and Spain. The euro is not an Italy in, an issue in Spain. Migration was never an issue in Greece. So let's keep the focus here. Let's try to get a good understanding We're all before making some provocative remarks across the board. Uh, Yanis Varoufakis, we heard from the Bank of Italy governor, Ignazio Visco, saying that Italy is just a few steps away from the very serious risk of losing the irreplaceable asset of trust. How much would that be damaging to Italy and Europe? Uh, he's quite right. Trust has been shattered. The political center in, in, in Italy, like in other parts of Europe, has completely subsided. But the reason for that has nothing to do with migration. Allow me to put it very simply. Italy is a country that should be doing very well, despite its many faults and, 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 and problems. Why am I saying that? It's got a current account surplus. It has had one for many years. It is a major exporter. <laughs> they export more than they import. And the government has for years now enjoyed a government primary surplus, budget surplus. A country like that should be doing well. And yet, for the last 20 years, we have an Italy that is absolutely stagnating. The you know, uh, GDP per capita has been falling. For the first time, it has fallen below Spain. And the reason for that is because the Italian economy cannot sustainably remain within the straitjacket of a fiscal policy imposed by the monetary union upon it. And the people of Italy have voted against technocrats implementing austerity for the many and socialism for the very, very few. And what did they get now? They got an IMF apparatchik as prime minister with a plan to do exactly the same. And therefore, we have a massive crisis of democratic legitimacy. I hear what you're saying, Giannis, but at the same time, the stagnation coincided with an aging population in Italy, closer integration with Europe, which exposed Italy's uh, uncompetitive uh, practices in general. So it, it can't just be due to uh, Brussels that, that Italy is not doing as well as it should be on the, on the face of it. I'm afraid you're very wrong. It's not got nothing to do with Brussels. It's got to do with the monetary union. Look, when you bind monetarily together an economy like that of Italy with an economy, let's say, like Germany, and you fix the exchange rates between them forever and ever, and you have an Italy whose con industrial concentration ratio, capital concentration ratio, is much lower than of Germany, and you don't have the mechanism of a, a gradual slide in the exchange rate to compensate for this difference in excess capital capacity. 
what you end up with is a permanent recession, a permanent stagnation in the deficit countries like Italy. And then after that, you have the political crisis that follows. There is, uh, allow me to say that Italy has always been quasi-corrupt, quasi-inefficient, quasi-problematic. But remember, from the 1950s to the 1990s, Italy was growing. In the 1980s and 1990s, Italy, despite all the problems you said, the demographics, the corruption, the tax evasion and so on, Italy was growing. It was not in the clasps of a permanent stagnation. That is due to the terrible design of the Eurozone. And so the only way out for Italy is to drop the euro, is to leave the euro? There's no other way to turn its economy around or to to get out of the stagnation? Allow me to, to use a metaphor. When you are in a building that is on fire, but there are no exits, there are two things you should do. The first thing you should do, given that there are no exits, is try to put the fire out. So my recommendation would be that the Italian political system should simply go to Brussels and particularly to Berlin and join forces with Emmanuel Macron and all, all those of us in Europe who are asking for very sensible but important reforms to the way that the Eurozone is run and demand that these reforms take place. And at right. the same time, have a plan for boring a hole in the burning building's walls in order to escape if need be. I would not recommend a Euro exit. I was never a proponent of Grexit, of Italexit, exit, of any kind of exit from the Eurozone. But if Berlin continues to insist that business should remain as usual, when business as usual is destroying our houses and our countries, then there has to be a plan B. Yeah, and, and we understand that, of course, there's pressure from a lot of the periphery countries for Germany to change its way. But, Yanis, let me bring also Wolfgang back into the conversation. Well, I, I want to refer to the point you made before, how important trust here is. And because if we take it back three, four weeks, there was no issue whatsoever in Italy, despite the economic fundamentals being what they are. The issue here is that we had uh, the five star in the league that basically they follow your copybook. That is what they did. And they managed to uh, kill the political capital, the kind of credibility that Italy has built over time. Don't you think that is actually the real issue in these days? Well, allow me to correct you profoundly. They didn't copy my, co- my, my book, and for a very simple reason. I was a passionate and remain a passionate Europeanist. I wanted desperately to keep Greece in the Eurozone and the European Union as a committed Europeanist. And the only thing that I was struggling for was the debt restructure, which was essential for Greece to remain sustainably in the Eurozone. The difference is that Mr. Salvini and Mr. De Maio, the leaders of the two populist parties that forged uh, an alliance after the March election, um, they, they, for them, their wet dream is to get out of the euro. That is a profound difference between me and them. Allow me to put it on a personal note. And I, also, sir, to say that a few weeks ago there was no problem when the March election delivered a monumental blow to the political establishment, uh, yielding a major- an absolute majority in, in Parliament for the xenophobes and the anti-Europeanists, that, see, that statement of yours is a very good indication of how complacent the establishment in Italy has become, and now it is getting its comeuppance to the detriment of all of us in Europe.